Since mankind first evolved to walk upright and leave his simian cousins behind, he has overcome innumerable perils exploring the four corners of the Earth. By 1933, only a few blank spots remained. And one for good reason. Here beneath the churning waters of the Indian Ocean is the resting place of what some have called the most hellish place on Earth, Skull Island. Skull Island had long existed as a sailor's legend, passed down by word of mouth and in hastily drawn sketches. No one believed the fantastic tales of prehistoric creatures still roaming the Earth. Skull Island was a complete geological and evolutionary anomaly, a place of inexhaustible mysteries. But when Westerners first arrived on Skull Island in 1933, they found themselves running from giant beasts that up to that point had only been known from the fossil record. Little did scientists suspect that within 15 years, this perversion of evolution, this impossible island, would disappear forever. Creatures on Skull Island may seem fantastical, but you have to realize that there was obviously a time very recently when the Komodo dragon was discovered. In Asia, they realized that there were these enormous eight or nine foot long reptilian creatures that, that were the stuff of legend. There are other examples apart from Skull Island of, of, of species that have um, been either thought to be extinct and been rediscovered or species that could be completely unknown uh, discovered in the modern age like the coelacanth, a fish that in theory died out hundreds of millions of years ago, living in quite an extended population right up the African coast through Asia. Gorillas themselves were mythic creatures. They were like the wild man of the forest. And they were in mythology and rumor and speculation for centuries and centuries before they were ever actually seen. It wasn't until last century, actually 1902, I think it was, that the mountain gorilla was actually finally discovered as a real animal and acknowledged by the Western world that, yes, these creatures did exist. As recently as 1992, large new species have been discovered. There was a species of bovid, you know, a cow-like creature discovered in Laos. I mean, that's a large animal. How does an animal that size go undiscovered until now? But we're discovering new animals all the time. Before Carl Denham's crew landed on Skull Island in 1933, it was common knowledge that dinosaurs had been extinct for 65 million years. The prevailing theory has held that an asteroid collided with the Earth 65 million years ago, fermenting a prolonged global winter. Dinosaurs and 50% of all animal species became extinct. But on one tropical island near what is now Indonesia, that theory runs into gargantuan obstacles. Skull Island is a remarkable place because somehow, uh, despite all the changes that have affected the rest of the world, this amazing menagerie of creatures have managed to survive intact. So where everywhere else in the world dinosaurs became extinct 65 billion years ago, on Skull Island, by some miracle, they've survived. How did these Cretaceous-era beasts endure into our time? From 1934 to the start of World War II, a series of expeditions journeyed to Skull Island to unravel this riddle of nature. Ill-prepared for the island's hazards, dozens of scientists met horrific deaths. Never in my wildest dreams would I have imagined my partner at breakfast, Sir Neville Whitecliffe, would be a dinosaur's lunch not three hours later. British Expedition, 1934. The lucky survivors uncovered Skull Island's history of geological instability. Incessant earthquakes had produced massive fissures, which in the days of the dinosaurs housed thermal vents. These geological clues led to a hypothesis about the survival of the dinosaurs. The thermal vents had kept the island temperate, even tropical. While the rest of the Earth was freezing and other species became extinct, Skull Island's jungles were warm and teeming with life. This miracle allowed the giant reptile's evolution to continue unabated for another 65 million years. The dinosaurs continued to evolve, to become more aggressive, more intelligent, and to diversify into these forms that we don't actually see in paleontology elsewhere. No longer was the Tyrannosaurus rex the simple hunter of the plains. On Skull Island, it evolved into larger, more ferocious, and more nimble Vastatosaurus rex, 
they have very large feet to cope with the uneven and broken terrain of Skull Island, permitting them to weave and, and jink and, and move across very uneven and, and precarious surfaces. He's got these thinner ribs and hips, which give him more sort of snake-like movement that uh, can help him get through the tighter jungle. Another terrifying hunter unique to Skull Island was the Venatosaur, similar to a Velociraptor. The major difference is that these guys on the island are big. When you think of raptors, you think of something about the size of a lion at the most, whereas these guys are about 20 feet long. And so this thing had this, you know, amazingly powerful jaws, and but he had this really streamlined body, you know, which would make him very, very fast. Not only dinosaurs lived on Skull Island, but also beasts just as terrible, or even worse. Lurking in the deep crevasses of the island were discovered at great human cost some of the vilest creatures known to man. The pit is where uh, creatures fall in. It's a natural predator trap. It's full of rotting carcasses and animals in there. And so therefore, you've just got all these scavenger creatures living in this kind of viscous soup at the bottom. Exploring that pit was like turning over stones in Hades. Spring Expedition, 1937. In the deep rents and fissures of Skull Island, there's some remarkable species including the most disturbing Carnictus, which essentially is a giant parasitic worm-like creature that has evolved beyond the need to be a parasite and is much more of an active predator and scavenger itself. Carnictus means the meat weasel in reference to its writhing, long, linear sort of form. It's an animatic stomach with some teeth on one end, and it's just this muscle that moves around looking for things to eat. Perils resided not only in the depths of the island, but in the skies as well where the terrifying Pteropus mordax ruled. The flying creature of the Pteropus mordax is just essentially a big flying rodent. It has the same similar body plan to a pterodactyl in some ways, except for the legs, and it fulfills the same function, and it's the same kind of creature. I think their basic you know, lifestyle is pretty similar to a bat. They seem to spend the days in caves hanging upside down from a roof. It's just hell with wings. It's just pus and <laughs> disgusting <laughs> flying around the place. The Terpus Mordax caves were on the highest peaks of Skull Island. Also living on these mountaintops was a species of giant gorilla known as Megapromatus Kong. If I had to live anywhere on this godforsaken rock, it would be high, in those hills, way above that hell of a jungle. Leave it to the monkey to get it right. Fall Expedition, 1936. Kong's origins are shrouded in mystery, and where they came from is completely open to interpretation. They certainly weren't there since the Cretaceous period, since apes of any kind hadn't really evolved back then. So they obviously are an example of a species that's gotten there more recently. Whether they evolved on the island itself or whether they were introduced from somewhere else, again, is really open to speculation. Possibly Kong's lineage stems from Asia, from Gigantopithecus, which is a huge ape ancestor that they found fossil records of in Asia. Giganthopithecus was certainly good two to three times the size of a modern gorilla, but even that, it's quite a leap to go from that to the size of Kong, you know, who's the size of a house. Despite their enormity, these gorillas were still simian to the core. They're all very socially adept creatures, and whether it's a, a relationship solely with your mum and siblings or whether it's a whole troop, rely on other individuals around you, not only for protection, but for cleanliness and for mental stability. But the giant apes were not the only social primates on the island. Excavations discovered that miraculously, about 3,000 years ago, a highly developed civilization had established itself. The island was once populated by a very sophisticated and advanced race of people, maybe around the level of, let's say, the Inca. It would have been a civilization sort of on a, on a par with ancient Egypt or, or, the, or the, the Hittites or Sumerians. It was a major civilization that had its own architecture and its own style with a spiritual background. What we do know is that they um, were heavily into human sacrifice, that there was a, a, a cult of the dead. The ancient race from Skull Island had revered the dead and had kept their skulls and put them on display as part of their religion, I guess. And uh, underground, they had great catacombs and stacks of skeletal body parts. Most of the buildings of, uh, of Skull Island have, have perished and been overgrown by the jungle. But the ones that survived showed that they had a, uh, 
very sophisticated building method. They built large temples, huge stone structures. The building styles mirror, say, Nan Madol up in Micronesia, where you've got these structures, sort of walled compounds, in effect, made from crystal basalt logs. Basalt geometric rods of stone may be two to three metres long. And the great benefit of these was they'd almost work like pickup sticks. They had the ability to sort of weave them into each other to be able to build much more extroverted structures in their architecture. The ancient race constructed a city on the highest part of the island. This Acropolis was surrounded by a massive wall that was once 24 miles in diameter. When it was originally built, it was to protect the ancient civilization from all of the things that might threaten it, which would include dinosaurs and huge gorillas and various other things. We can see from the shape of the wall that it would have really been very, very extensive, which suggests there was a huge city there. But the ancient civilization was doomed. Just over 1,000 years ago, Skull Island's routine earthquakes intensified with disastrous consequences. The earthquakes began to erode the island, and the island began to sink. This very big piece of landmass has been progressively dropping into the sea, and now all we're left with is the very tip of this landmass um, that's jutting out as an island. So all of the creatures who once survived in a much bigger piece of land have now been shunted into the middle as the island sinks and the coast comes in. The predators were packed into a much smaller territory with a large reduction in available food biomass. So there's a great deal more conflict on the island than you typically see around the world in, in various natural unaffected ecosystems. The whole place is falling to bits, the ecosystem's falling to bits. Maybe that's why there's too many predators on the island, because, you know, there's just not enough room for everything to live. The carnivores naturally look to a new food supply, the humans of the city. And the humans' only protection failed as the earthquakes continued to wreak havoc on the massive wall. The walls began to collapse, allowing the animals, the giant creatures, into the inner sanctum of the city. And the humans simply lost. I mean, the humans were the weakest of the species, and they were killed off. They, they might have actually left the island. They might have um, taken off and, uh, and settled somewhere else. We're not sure. We might even be descended from them ourselves. All that exists of this incredible race of, of humans are the old ruins, the wall and some of the temples and things that you see on the interior of the island, overgrown. But the story of humans living on Skull Island was not yet over. When the island was discovered by the Western world in the 1930s, they found a small group of desperate souls eking out the barest existence possible. The current inhabitants of Skull Island are probably the descendants of people who were shipwrecked. On, on the island. A race of, of islanders, a sort of a, a, a Melanesian, Micronesian society. They're very much a hunter-gatherer people. It looks like that is part of their historical culture. Their only clothing is the hair that they grow on their heads. All of their clothing is uh, knotted out of their own human hair. They have lost the primitive techniques of weaving and only can use crude knotting to create these garments. They're scavengers. They basically live on birds, eggs, fish, crustaceans. They have managed to survive clinging to this tiny fragment of land. And the only thing that was protecting them from the dinosaurs, the monsters, the things that would kill them was this wall, you know. And so this great big ancient wall, which went out of the sea on one side, across this peninsula on the island, and into the sea on the other side. And so they were confined to a very small part of the island. Beyond the wall was all lush jungle, tropical rainforest, but on their side of the wall, it's been picked clean. There's no greenery left. It's just this crude, hard rock forms that they live in amongst. It's not easy. To see mankind reduced to such a state Rodent-like, fearful and small, is humbling. Man is no hunter here, he is prey. Fall Expedition, 1935. In an intriguing parallel with first century Jerusalem, the ancient people of Skull Island had buried their dead outside the city's protective wall. Since the modern Skull Islanders lacked any construction materials or skills, 
the only safe dwelling that they could find was in these ancient tombs, amongst the bones of the long gone. They're being hunted themselves, so they live as much as possible in the old tombs. It's almost a subterranean existence. And they have come to worship the giant gorilla as some sort of god, and they practice human sacrifice to appease this giant gorilla. It is well documented that Kong was trapped and removed from Skull Island by Carl Denham's 1933 expedition. What Denham learned upon his 1935 return was that Kong had been the last of his kind. Megachromatus Kong's extinction resulted from a combination of nature's wrath and the weaponry of modern man. Upon the outbreak of World War II, the scientific expeditions halted. In 1948, as the first post-war expedition was en route, a massive earthquake registering 9.2 on the Richter scale proved to be too forceful for the weakened outcrop of prehistoric wonder. The very geological instability that had produced the thermal vents that enabled the dinosaurs to survive had now led to the island's demise. Much like the legendary lands of Atlantis and Lemuria, Skull Island vanished beneath the waves. But unlike those imaginary civilizations, Skull Island was explored by modern man, and many lives were lost in the meeting. This home video and the companion book, The World of Kong, A Natural History of Skull Island, are available at local booksellers everywhere.